this time. We got what we got one minute. All right, let's all get our hymnals this evening and stand and sing page number 32. Number 32. Y'all just pray for me as I try to sing uh, this song. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Amen. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey. 
for to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day. Ye better men now serve him against unnumbered foes. Let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you, ye must not so trust your own. Put on the gospel armor, each piece put on with prayer. Where duty calls and danger, be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next the victor song. To him that overcometh, a crown of life shall be. He is the king of glory, shall reign eternally. All right, go in your Bibles again with us tonight to the book of Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, chapter number two, will be where we're at this evening, Nehemiah, right after the book of Ezra, right before the book of Esther. Amen. Well, pick you up one of them little brochures. I had not got the fixed up pretty one yet, but I've got some sitting back there at the offering pan about our upcoming August. I am some kind of excited, I'm telling you. It's going to be wonderful the month of August. I've got Brother Jimbo Seaton scheduled for the, the uh, first one. That'll be the third, I think it is. And then we got Brother uh, Alan Barker, then Brother Tony Feeney, then Brother Jeremy Simpson, and then Brother Terry Lawson. And you're going to like every bit of it, I'm telling you. They're good preachers, and uh, some have got some special singing coming with them. Others has got uh, their choir coming. So we're going to have a good time the month of August. Uh, I'm excited about the rest of the year's schedule, really. I've got Brother uh, Stacy Piercy coming for us today in September, one Sunday. And then I anchored today, hallelujah to glory, Brother Brian McBride will be with us the Thursday through Sunday before Thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. So I'm excited greatly about that. And then Brother Joe's supposed to give me a day or two there in December. So we've got some good upcoming stuff. Amen. Can any of y'all smile? That's about what everybody looks like. What you doing right there? <laughs> Y'all be happy in the Lord. That's some good preaching. That's some of the best caliber preaching we got in the country right now. Amen. We got them coming here. So I thank the Lord for that. Praise his name. And I appreciate him getting it all worked out for us. Amen. Amen. So y'all probably vote me out about the end of the year and get you one of them good ones in here. So uh, whatever the Lord's will is, we'll... <laughs> We'll go with that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miss Kay. She's the smartest one in the bunch because she spoke up and nobody else did. Thank you, Miss Kay. I know she loves me. <clears throat> Amen. All right. We'll deal with our prayer request at the end of the service. For those online, you can send them in. Brother Clarence is keeping up with it. He can make a note for us, and we'll deal with our prayer request at the end of our service uh, this evening. I'll give you a few thoughts. Remember last week we started talking about Nehemiah, and we talked about in chapter 1 what it takes to rebuild a work, what it takes to build a work. We're going to deal with that for a little bit because we got to build one. We've got a whole bunch of pews that ain't got nobody in them, and we need to be busy. Amen? 
Amen. God didn't want us to have a half-empty facility, so we got to get to work. Amen. Amen. So, book of Nehemiah, how to rebuild a work, and that's what Nehemiah does. I'm giving you a practical lesson of a guy that went in and done for real a new work or a rebuilt work for the glory of God. And I'm going to show you tonight what it takes. There's, there's at least three parts to it I'm going to deal with the second part tonight. The first part was it takes a burden. And I talked about uh, they had to, he, he heard of their sorrows. He felt their suffering. He went to the side of the situation, and he saw the situation. And there's a few things you need to do. You need to get out from under the sitting here in the church, get out there and see what the world's going through. And it don't take long to listen around and see there's a lot of people that are hurting and in great need of the Lord to do a great work in their life. Amen. We all know folks, and uh, that's what we want to provide here is good help for people. Amen. Whether they're lost, whether they're saved, they need the help of the Lord in this life that we live in. So Nehemiah chapter number 2, uh, verse number 1 says, And it came to pass in the month Nisan, in the 20th year of Artaxius the king, that wine was before him, and I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now it had not been before time, now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Wherefore, the king said unto me, Why is thou countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of the heart. Then I, then I was very sore afraid. Now, do y'all know why he's afraid? Y'all know what Nehemiah's job was? He's a cupbearer. He brings to the king and makes sure what he brings to the king is safe. So if he's before the king presenting him with something to drink and he's sad, the king's a little bit concerned why this boy's sad. Is this, is this not a good drink? Is there something fixing to happen? So you got to understand what, what is going on in that process. Verse 3 says, And the king said, Let the king, and, and said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchre, lieth, in, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Then the king said unto me, For what dost thou make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. And I said unto the king, If it please the king, if thy servant have found favor, in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the uh, city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it. And the king said unto me, the queen also sitting by him, How long shall thy journey be? And when that when wilt and when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. Moreover, I said to the king, If it please the king, let letters be given unto me. Uh, to the governors beyond the river, that I may, con that they may convoy, uh, convey me over till I come into Judah, and a, and a letter unto Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber that I to make beams for the gates of the play, uh, palace, which appertaineth to the house, for the wall of the city and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. Then I came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horses with me. When Sanballat the Hornite and Tobiah the Ammonite heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. And I arose in the night, I and some few with me, neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem, neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I rode upon. And I went out by night uh, by the gate of the valley, uh, even before the dragon well to the Drung port and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Then I went to the gate of the fountain, to the king's pool, but there was no 
place for the beast that, I, that was under me to pass. Then I went up in the night by the brook and viewed he the wall, with me, turned so back and entered in by the gate uh, of the valley, and so returned. And the rulers knew not whether I went or what I did, neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, uh, nor the priests, nor the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. Then I said unto them, ye, uh, ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are bur uh, gates thereof burned with fire. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. Let's pray. Father, take the word of God tonight. Use it. Help me, I pray, to deliver the thoughts and the message. And God, will you use it for all thine honor and glory and help us, forgive us, and cleanse us, and purge us, that you might have your will and your way. We ask it, Jesus, in thy precious name, amen and amen. Now, I want to look at this this evening, and uh, we notice that in the first chapter, it was in the month Cheslu. Now it's in the month Nisan, or Nisan. By the way, did y'all know there was some automobiles in the Bible? Did y'all know that? Y'all know any, any automobiles in the Bible? Can anybody name one? I just did. Nissan's right there. Is there any others? What's the other? The Honda. Honda Accord, yeah. Well, see, I went to studying, and I found out that the first one mentioned was a ram. Yeah, the ram was mentioned in Genesis chapter 15, but they killed it, so... Then they used a ford to get over uh, the waters with. So the ford was mentioned in Genesis 32. And then the accord was mentioned first time. It was mentioned it was in Leviticus 25. And then here in uh, the book of Nehemiah chapter 2 is the Nissan. So there's a few vehicles in the Bible. Do you good to study your Bibles once in a while, folks. Amen. Amen. God help you. You ain't going to laugh on that. We're in trouble tonight. Amen. All right, we'll bear on down in some preaching. Now, number one, it took a burden to be able to work back. The second thing that it takes, it takes a blessing. Nehemiah has got to have permission to go. Nehemiah's got to have some possessions and some, some uh, uh, prosperity in order to go. And there's some people got to be involved as Nehemiah goes. Now, to rebuild the work, he needed liberty, he needed a ladder. He needed laborers, and he needed logs. But most of all, he needed the Lord. Now, there's your little five-point outline. That'll help you right there. Liberty, letter, logs, and laborers, and the Lord. Amen? So, what Nehemiah had to do in order for this blessing to come to pass, the first thing, the first thing that he had to do was he had to admit it. That right there is a big problem that a lot of most people have. The upper majority of folks has a problem admitting that they need some. Now, I can testify that a lot of times folks will enter in and out of this facility and never show that they have a need. Never appear to admit that they have a need. So you're going to have to admit we got a need or we ain't going to get what we need done for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. We have a need here. We've got several needs here at Tabernacle. Amen. And we need to admit that and do what we can. When you admit your need, you look in Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 5, 6, 11, chapter 2, verse 5, he admits that he needs mercy. He admits that there is sin in their lives and they need to get it cleaned up. Uh, he knows what caused it. If you go back and read in chapter 1, he knows why they're in desolation. That is the judgment of God. Now, a lot of folks will not admit that the problems they're facing, the things that's going on in their life, is because of judgment on God because then they'd have to admit that they're guilty of doing something they wasn't supposed to do. Or they're guilty of not doing something they were supposed to be doing. So we've got to be honest with God. We're going to get help. We've got to get honest with God. It's going to be almost impossible to see old-fashioned real revival 
and a rebuilding if folks don't admit that we got a problem. If we don't admit we've sinned and failed and come short. Amen? Amen. So when we come to that place, you go to 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 11 and 12. Uh, for reference there, you'll see that it speaks of uh, the reason that this desolation come upon Israel was because they had not obeyed Moses' command. They would not hearken, nor would they hear the commands that Moses gave them, which was commands of the Lord. Amen? So you got a problem there that they wasn't listening to what God said to do. They wasn't listening to what God had to say. And that's why a lot of preachers have problems these days because they preach God's message with a burden and with compassion and they give it out and the folks just don't want to hear it and they ain't going to hear it. They don't want to heed it. They don't want to hear it. So you got problems there when folks don't want to obey God. Therefore, you got judgment. That's what went on with the children of Israel. That's why they're a reproach right now is because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Now, Nehemiah does something that you need to get a hold of. Look with me at verse number 5. I'm going to show you something real quick. The Bible says in verse 5, King, uh, uh, Nehemiah talking to the king, he says, If thy servant have found favor in thy sight. Now, it's question and answer time. Let's take a break right here. What did he do to find favor in the sight of the kings? Anybody know? What did Nehemiah do or what happened that caused Nehemiah to have favor with the king. It's obvious he did. What did he do? Anybody know? <clears throat> so he done a work. He's a cupbearer. He's faithful to being a cupbearer. According to our text, he never brought the supply, the drink, the things that he brought to the king. He never brought that with a sad countenance. According to our text, Every time he appeared before him, he did not have a sad countenance because the king made a comment about this being the first time that he'd appeared before the king with a sad countenance. So he's always had a good spirit. Now listen, he's always had a good spirit about serving. That's important. You've got to think about why you're serving and what you're serving. And if you're serving the Lord, even if everybody else don't like it, you ought to have some joy in your heart. Amen. 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 When you're doing things for God, even if others don't attend or if others don't appreciate it, then you still ought to have some happiness about your heart because you've done it for Jesus. Amen. Uh, you, you've done things for others. I've done things for folks. And sometimes folks just don't appreciate things. That's the society we're in. Bible said in the latter days we'd have folks with unthankful hearts. Amen. We're there. You can do a lot of stuff for a lot of folks. They just don't care, don't appreciate it. They, they expect it because they think they deserve it. And that's a problem. You don't deserve a lot of the goodies that you get. You get it by grace. God's grace. God's mercy. Amen. So, Nehemiah had been doing a good work for the king. So when he needed favor, he done put something in the bank, so to speak, to draw on. Since he's been good, since he's been good to the king, since he took care of the king, since he's been a good servant, he now got something to draw on. And the king says, all right, buddy, what do you need? You know, we ought to be that way as well. We ought to be serving the king. We ought to be doing it with a happiness in our heart. We ought to come with a good countenance on us. Amen. Amen. We ought to, we ought to uh, be thankful that the Lord lets us be a servant to him. And, uh, I mean, not everybody got to be Nehemiah. Not everybody got to be a servant to the king. You ought to be thankful for those things. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. We, need to, we need to get this generation coming to understand it's a good thing to serve. There's benefits in serving. Nehemiah's got a burden that he's going to be able to take care of because he's had a good servant's heart. So you got to admit that there's a need there. We realize that we've got needs and we come before the Lord. We admit that, and I'm going to deal with that in just a second. When we realize that we cannot do a spiritual work through the weakness of our flesh, see, that's why we fail a lot of times. We try to do it. We try to do it. 
We try to do it rather than letting the Lord help us do it and doing it the way God said do it. Amen. Amen. You, you follow the way of the Lord and it'll go a lot better with you. Go to, go to John chapter 15. Let me read you a little verse here, John 15. <clears throat> Give you a little something to help us out a little bit. John 15. That comes after John 14 and before John 16. <sighs> What a crowd. Verse 5 says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. That's what your Bible says. That's what God said about the thing. We're going to do something. We're going to make a difference for his honor and his glory we're going we're gonna to do something spiritual. We're going to have to have the Lord with us on it. Amen? I know, I know, I know God's on it. I know God's involved with it. There's too many things worked out in the last little while uh, in our favor because of God. Now we got to get everybody else involved with it. See, Nehemiah's got a burden. Nehemiah's got a real burden, chapter 1. Now Nehemiah needs a blessing. And in order to get this blessing, first thing you got to do, you got to admit you need it. He didn't say, I got it, king. I can handle this. I don't need anything from you. I'll take care of it. No, he said, king, yeah, by the way, yes, I do have a need. Would you admit tonight, would you be honest with God that there's a need in your life to be able to fulfill what God's will in your life is? Sometimes we need God to refix our heart our, our attitudes needs adjusting. Our, our outlook on things sometimes needs adjusting. We need this of the Lord. And, and see, sometimes we might not be doing God's will God's way, so we need to say, Lord, I, I, I need your help. I'm trying to do it my way. I'm not doing it just right. Would you, would you help me in leading me and guiding me in the way you want it done? Amen. So it'll work right. You know what I mean? We got to realize that we can't do it of our own selves. Nehemiah could have tried to accomplish some of this by himself. He'd have run into all kinds of trouble. He run into trouble getting started. Now listen, every time you start to do something for God, don't expect it to be the smoothest, easiest thing in the world to do. Because the devil's crowd's going to show up as soon as you start trying to do something for his glory. Sand ballot and Tobiah is two, two of the biggest thorns in the flesh that Nehemiah faced. But he defeated them. He went ahead in spite of them. Bible says that Sand ballot and Tobiah both were grieved and they were upset because Nehemiah was seeking the welfare of Jerusalem. Now, you know, that sort of tells you what kind of caliber fellers these are. Here's a guy that's left a palace serving the king. All kinds of fineries of life attached to that. Here's a guy that's left the palace to come and serve the people just in order to help them. Ain't nothing in it for him but to help them people. He's not here to try to build his own palace. He's not here to build his own kingship. He's not here to have his own little kingdom. He's here to help the people of Israel get the walls back up, get the temple built back, and worship God. That's what he's here for. So we need to admit our need. Then we need to do the, need to do the other hard thing. It's tough to admit you've got to have some help. A lot of stubborn people around this world I'm, I'm doing one of them lockered things right now. I'm letting that sink in. A lot of stubborn people around this world. A few of them lodges here at Tabernacle. Amen. It's okay for folks to help you. Admit you need it and ask for it. And a lot of people has problems asking for anything. A lot of people has problems asking for anything. 
See, what we need to do is get to the place where we admit we need God and we need to ask for some things. First thing, listen to me. First thing Nehemiah asked for in this story, the first thing he asked, does anybody know what it was? In this story from last Wednesday night to the night, the first thing Nehemiah asked for, can anybody answer that? Verse 5, chapter 1, and I beseech thee. What is that? He's begging. <laughs> oh, God, oh, oh, Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth the covenant and mercy for them that love and observe the commandments. Let now thy ear be attentive and open thine eyes that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant which I pray, uh, which I pray before thee now night and day for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned. What's the first thing he asked for? Forgiveness. Sometimes we don't, we don't get there because we first off don't want to admit that we was wrong. You know, what was it? Was it old Fonzarelli? Some of y'all don't even know who that is. Back in, the, back in the good old days, when the happy days come on, we'd watch that little program on TV. Fonzie was so perfect in everything that he couldn't say the word. He couldn't say wrong. Because he's perfect on everything. That's the, that's the character he played. And see, a lot of, lot of God's people has got that same attitude. They have a problem admitting their wrongs but they don't have a bit of problem admitting what you've done wrong. They'll see what you've done wrong. You remember, see, I know that's true because Jesus dealt with it. He said, why, why are you talking about the moat, that little old bitty piece of a splinter that's in your brother's eye when you got a beam in yours? You got a great big log stuck up in your eye and you're wanting to look at your neighbor's got a little old moat. See, a problem we run into is admitting that we was wrong, are wrong. Asking the Lord to forgive us. See, when you go to the book of Matthew chapter 7, he says in Matthew 7, asking it shall be given, seeking you shall find, knocking the door shall be opened. You've been asking? See, a lot of folks think that when I say this about admitting your sin, you think I'm talking about some great horrible thing that we've got labeled as as, as that ugly stuff out there. Murder and lying and killing and stealing and all that kind of stuff. Robbing God in tithes and offerings. That's all in the same category, by the way. In the category sin. So when you, when you think about this matter of sin, uh, we got a problem admitting ours. And that's what holds the church up. When you, get a, when you get a congregation of folks together that's willing to, number one, admit that they got sin, and number two, ask Jesus to forgive them for it, you got some help coming in. I was talking to some of the brethren over the last several days, and, and, and we talked a little bit about revival, and there's never been a, a, a notable, remarkable revival without church confessing sin. I failed here, I failed there, I failed here. I done some, some of that the other day. Might need to do some more, but, you know, uh, we, 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 we've got to get clean with God so God can work on us and God can help us, amen? Getting a, getting a place of asking. We confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin, cleanse us all in righteousness. So we need to confess our sin. Then we need to not just confess it, but we need to comply with his standards. What he said he wanted done, the way he wants it done, ain't changed. God still builds a home, a church home, church house, a, a church facility the same way he did years ago. We're in 2021, but he still does it the same way. He gives a burden and he gives a blessing. 
And he does those two things when people admit and ask. How many of us has realized that we really got a problem here? We need to admit to God, something we're doing ain't exactly the way you want it done. We need some help. We need to be growing. We need to be doing something for the glory of God. We need to be seeing folks get saved. We need to be, we need to be fruitful as he promised us to be. There's a few little things that'll hold that up. Unconfessed sin is, is one of those things that'll hold us up. Well, sin, it's all sin. Whether it be uh, whatever label of church sin you want to go with Corinthians, they had all kinds of stuff going on in there. They was fussing and fighting. They was backbiting. There was uh, a bunch of babies that wasn't drinking of uh, uh, the, the meat of the word and, and the milk of the word like they're supposed to. They wasn't feeding themselves any. They was still babies. There's all kinds of problems that goes on. You, you, you can have the discord among the brethren. Uh, you can have folks that's not willing to tithe and follow God's command in that. That's the first. That's one of the strong things. That will hold a church up. See, what's, what's bad is, is we expect God to bless us like the king did Nehemiah. And we've been robbing from God. Oh, Lord, help us and bless us now, Lord. And we've been holding back our tithes and offerings. We've not been doing our part of giving. Amen. And that, that's the kind of stuff that'll hold a work up, keep God from blessing and doing what God wants to do. You do your part. Let me tell y'all something. Let's say, for instance, I give Corey, I don't, I, don't, I don't pay him to do anything at the house. I don't pay him to do his chores. Daddy didn't pay me to do my chores. But if I give him some money, which I do from time to time, but if, if, he, was, if he was getting $10 a week to take the trash out, he would need to give God one dollar of that ten dollars to be his ten percent. Okay? If Nathan gets a job and makes a hundred dollars a week, Nathan would need to give God ten dollars of that hundred. That's ten percent. The same as the dollar for ten is ten percent, so is the ten dollars for the hundred dollars. So regardless of what your income is. 10% is 10%. Then you got above that for your offerings. Amen. If you're not giving above that, you're not in God's will right there. If, you're, if your minimum given is 10% only, then you're not where you need to be with the Lord. New Testament giving is more than a 10% offering. They gave with their tithes and offerings and excesses. Amen. 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 If I was to do math, I would not reveal people's givings in here. But I could do the math on the board before you of the givings in here, who gives. And I can tell you, before we ever look at it, percentage-based giving, you'd be surprised of how that giving comes in. Some of the folks that are more needy for their money are bigger givers than folks that are comfortable or okay. And you know, that's just the way the Bible is. The Lord made a mem memorial and told the preachers to preach about that widow that gave her two mites. Over all that other bunch that was given, y'all remember when the church got rolling and, and uh, was it Barnabas that sold his houses and gave one of those brethren sold their houses and gave that, their excess, their other houses, their excess, they gave that excess to the church because others was in need. God didn't, or the Lord Jesus didn't say, wait a minute, everybody stop, take notice. Let's preach about this. Let's preach a memorial for this giver in Acts chapter 4 and 5 there. See, that's why Ananias and Sapphire wanted to get in on it because they, they, they thought they was getting big glory out of it. But the Lord didn't say, set a memorial for that giver that gave of his houses. Y'all hearing me? He did say set a memorial for that widow woman because what she gave was more than him giving the houses. 
percentage-wise. So, see, that's an area that, that you you got to mind God in that. Now, if you're, if you're giving like God's told you to, this ain't bothering you. It don't bother me. I, I, I do my tithes and offerings, amen. So it don't bother me to deal with tithing. But if it's bothering you, then you're somewhere you need to get right with God about it. Y'all going to make me circle a tree, ain't you? Found a stump. We're going to have to deal with that stump. I'm trying to get us to understand in, in getting the blessing, the aid that we need from God, we've got to admit we've sinned and we've got to ask him to forgive us for that sin. And then we've got to follow what his standards is. Stay with it. Do what God said to do. Amen. God gave us a King James Bible to tell us how to be saved and how to serve, how to be good stewards of God, how to reach the sinners. God gave us this book for all those things. It ain't just get saved and sit down. Get saved and be a blessing. Be used of God and, and do great things for the Lord. Amen, amen. So admit that we need help. Ask for help. And then you can find the accomplishments. When you look at what happened here, he got the letter in chapter 2, verse 7. He got the logs granted to him in chapter 2, verse 8. He needed both of those to complete the task. And there he did. He got the furnishings. He also got the force. The force because the Lord sent with him in, in 2 9, he sent some guards with him, captains of the army. Maybe, maybe that king sort of suspected. Send Ballot and Tobiah to come give him trouble. But with those helpers there with him, those guards there with him, that sort of, no, nah, we better not attack him. We better, we just better might stir up the people instead of trying to attack. Now, y'all know the rest of the story, don't you? Y'all know, know the end of Nehemiah. They did build a temple. They did get the walls up. So what I'm preaching you is truth. And what I'm preaching you works. So if we're going to do something in building a work for God, getting the work back where it needs to be, doing a rebuild or so to speak, we first got to have a burden and then we've got to have the blessing. My preaching needs the touch of God. My directions of study needs God's leadership. Everything that I do, I need the Lord to help me do. I'm amazed that I'm this far now. I'm, here's me a confession. I'm amazed I'm this far down the road. I've been around church 56 years, 57 years, whatever I am. 19, what are we? 56? You're the same age, so don't act like you don't know. I was born in 64, so I'll be 57 this year, I guess. So 56 years I've been around church. I'm surprised. I'm amazed that I don't know more better how to do it than what I do. And that when I go to the Lord, I'm like, Lord, I don't know what to do. I need you to help me. I need you to open my eyes, give me leadership, give me guidance, show me in the word, direct me, help me do this. Now, I know a bunch of guys, that they've arrived. They know how to do it all. But it's obvious we don't. See all these big holes? Obviously, we don't. We ain't doing something right. So before you criticize what I preach tonight, look at these pews and read the end of the story. Because what I'm giving you is right out of this Bible. These things are necessary. These things are, are what we have to do. We've got to admit where we're at and we've got to ask for some help. Then we can have an accomplishment. Nehemiah's got accomplishments in chapter 2. He received the letter he needed. He received the logs he needed. He's got the laborers going. But more importantly, he's got the Lord working for him. He got favor with the king because he prayed first. What is praying? That's asking God. God, I need some help. And you can tell how much help people need by the way they ask. Little Quake grabbed my finger today. He wanted to take and show me something. He 
he's, his, his way of telling me he wants to go show me something is he says, help. Help, Paul, Paul, help. So he grabs my finger and leads me. He didn't really desperately need help because he just said, help, Paul, Paul, mom, mom, help, Paul, Paul. So I follow him. Ain't that the way he does it, Nathan? So they'll know I'm telling the truth. But if he's got a problem, he'll squall out so you know he needs some help. Right? So you can tell by the way we cry out how much we believe we really need help. Lord, we sure could use some help over here. That, that, that's probably not going to get much attention. Lord, please help us, God. We need some help. That's probably going to get a little further. I'm not talking about being fake in your praying. I'm talking about when you get real, you get a real burden, you'll cry out right. You'll be wanting that blessing. I've been dealing over the last little while with this situation. We've got loved ones that's going to split hell wide open. We need a burden to reach our family. Our family would almost fill us up. But whether they fill up in here or not, they need to get saved. If they go to one of the other beautiful churches in this county, they need to be saved. And I want, I want an old-fashioned salvation center set up right here at Tabernacle. And if we can get them in that door, we'll have the right spirit, we'll have the right songs, we'll have the right sermon, and we can watch some of them folk get saved. That's what we want. You don't want to send in your folks that's in bad shape into an operating room and the doctor don't even care if he's there or not. Well, Y'all go check his bill, make sure he paid the bill before I start cutting. That ain't the kind of doctor you want. You want one like some of the ones we know that, that it don't matter whether you got taters or tomatoes or chickens or whatever to pay with, they'll take care of him. That's what Dr. Branch told Daddy. He said, I don't care. I ain't worried about your bill. He said, you can pay me with taters or chickens or whatever else. I don't care. And I believe he meant it with all his heart. We're going to see a work go. We've got to admit our condition, admit that we have a need. Then we've got to ask the Lord for it. We've got needs around here. Y'all want me to give you a few? We need a parking lot finished out back yonder so we can park the people that wants to come. Amen. We need finances to help take care of the needs and the things that we've got going on around here. Amen. There's, there's needs. We need to pay the bills. We, we, we got needs. We need, we need Sunday schools filled up with kids. We need teachers to fill up the Sunday schools. We need, we need primary teachers and then substitutes for it. They need help. They need breaks every once in a while. They need somebody to go in there and help them a little bit. Amen. Amen. We need, we need a choir full of people that love Jesus, that wants to sing for his honor and his glory. Amen. Amen. We got needs. We need these things for one purpose. Glorify our king. He gets glory through our worship, and he gets uh, glory through fulfilling his will, and that's old-fashioned sinner getting saved by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. John Bunyan said, you can, do more, you can do more than pray after you have prayed. But you cannot do more than pray until you have prayed. John Bunyan said that. If you young folks ain't read John Bunyan, you need to read John Bunyan. Amen. There's a lot of good stuff in there that you can find out. Amen. I, 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 I thank God wants to build a work back up in here. And I feel sure in my heart God wants to use us as, to do it. That's what Nehemiah said. He said, let us. He didn't say, hey, y'all need to get these walls back up over here. 
Let us. Each one of us can contribute in one way or the other. Each one of us can do some things that will help to build this up. Some folks may be the callers. Some folks may be the visitors. Some folks, I mean, there's a lot of things that folks can do that can help get this work going, and I'm interested in getting it going. Look, I done told you before we started tonight, God's got some good men going to come in and encourage us and help us, and, and I'm telling you, we got the best of the best coming between now and December. God's working things out. Praise God for that. Amen. I'm thankful. So let's, let's do our part. Let's exercise what a preacher preached tonight. You want to? Let's admit our need. Let's ask for help. Let's admit our needs. I don't know what I, Well, do this then. Pray like the Psalms have said. Search me, O God. Let God search your heart. Let God search and point out. But be willing that whatsoever he points out, you will obey and you'll deal with it. Amen? I mean, it's no good for him to show you what's wrong if you ain't going to fix it, if you don't let him help you fix it. So God, help us tonight to obey what God the Father has pinned down in his precious word for us to do for the honor and the glory of his son, Jesus Christ. You mind the Lord while she plays, sings, whatever she's got on her heart there. You mind the Lord, will you? James 4. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it's a sin. So if you know what you need to be doing, you know what's right and what's good, and you ain't doing it, you know you need to be doing, then you're in sin. You need to deal with that. Let the Lord help you with that. Amen. He'll forgive you and give you the grace and the strength to accomplish what you need to. So you ask the Lord to help you in that. Amen. All right. Let's do some prayer requests this evening. Um, pray for Miss Judy. She saw the doctor today. There, She's got two or three more visits and things going on. 
trying to get scheduled up and figured out what all they need to do. they done some blood work, doing some more testing. So pray for her. She was hurting pretty pretty bad this afternoon. She called me right not long before church time, said she wasn't going to be able to make it back. She was uh, hurting pretty bad. She had a pretty good day, and then all of a sudden this afternoon it, it kicked in on her. So uh, pray for her that they can get her some relief and get it done quick. Right now she's got uh, some the endoscopy and stuff scheduled August 26. So pray if Lord will work that out to get in there a little earlier. Because she, she needs to be in there tomorrow. I'm just to be honest. She needs to be there tomorrow. And uh, get her fixed up, get her back to uh, able to enjoy doing some things. So you pray much for Miss Judy. Remember, continue to pray with Miss Nikki. Um, she's still doing some testing, doing some of those uh, infusions. Uh, and it's working on her really bad. So pray very much for Miss Nikki, for Miss Anita. Um, Nikki's in severe pain and, and suffering. Uh, but Miss Nikki, I mean, Miss Anita's there with her, helping her. And as a mother, you know, she's hurting and suffering um, with her. So that's, that's, that's tough. Uh, I, I know I don't do good. I'll just be honest with you folks. I don't do good watching Judy hurt. It, 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 I'm, I'm wanting them to get something done, get it fixed um, right now. And, and I told the nurse today or the doctor today, um, you know, I've been watching her hurt. I'd like to see this get fixed as quick as we can. And uh, so they've done some blood work. I, I made a suggestion, and they're looking at some areas. So hopefully they can check that out and see if it's a, at least eliminate that possibility of, a, of an ulcer or a uh, bacteria there that's causing some of this. So pray for good results so they can figure out what's going on there and get it fixed um, to help her. So pray much pray much for Judy Nikki. Uh, pray for baby Ella. Uh, they have reached some diagnosis on her, and she's got some situations to deal with there. So continue to pray that all that will clear up as she grows. The Lord would touch her and give her healing in her body. So lift up baby Ella much. Continue to pray for baby Noah. Continue to pray for Miss Kelly and Carissa and all that they go through with their their handicaps, hindrances, hurts uh, in their body. So lift them up and pray uh, the Lord would continue to help there. All right, new request this evening. Miss Ann? Okay. All right, pray much for Miss, Miss Keisha. Uh, Ann and Bill's granddaughter pray pray much the Lord would touch and help in that and uh, the Lord would, would minister um, what's needed there with her and a uh, very delicate situation there not knowing so uh, just lift Keisha up and pray the Lord touch and help in her alright someone else got a request Brother Jack yeah it's All right, pray much for Corey. They're, they're going to amputate the lower part of his leg, and uh, that's the best idea they've got for helping him with his pain and suffering. So uh, pray for him, pray for that situation, and uh, pray for those that's able to try to encourage uh, in whatever psychiatrist or doctors that he talks with in that area that they can help him as well. It, it would be, it would be a, a bad bad situation to deal with. So. Uh, he's been what three years now, so pray for him. That's that's tough to to be hindered and hurt like that for three years. And uh, pray the Lord would help there. Okay. Anyone else? Miss K. Okay. All right, I remember Miss Kay there. Brother Scott, some unspoken request. 
unspoken, Miss Shirley? Miss Sue, unspoken? Miss Tina Curtis on the line there said uh, she's got some unspoken requests and to be praying for her family as well. All right, anyone else? Miss Karen? All right, remember Miss Bree, pray for her and all the family involved with that, losing her great grandmother. Uh, pray the Lord would touch and help her there. And uh, remember, Miss Karen's got some project stuff she's working on. Pray the Lord give direction and help in, in, in that work. We're trying to get some things rolling again for our children here at the church and to get the youngins back in here. Amen? Amen. Amen. So uh, pray much about that. Let's, let's do what we can to get things rolling again. They go back to school next month, so, um, and I understand it's going to be voluntary on the mass there, so maybe we can get back to halfway normal and we get some folks back in church too. Amen? Amen. All right. Anyone else got a request this evening? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Y'all remember. Pray for that. Anyone else got a request this evening? Remember the lost. The other day when we was talking about it, raising hands, they was hands all over the building. It's got lost loved ones or folks that's out of God's will that needs prayer. So let's remember them, be praying for them. I spent a good while in prayer this morning, praying over a lot of them. Uh, try to remember everybody, try to remember all the requests, and I do I write some down. But uh, a lot to pray about, a lot of folks that's going through things, a lot of folks that needs the Lord. And and just pray. I've got, I've got several families on my heart I'm going after uh, to try to reach and get in church. So pray God's grace and compassion will be with me and uh, be able to say the right things, do the right thing to, to try to win some folk. We've got to win some folk to Jesus. They're going to go to hell, and, and they're connected to us. So, you know, when I read Ezekiel 33, they're talking about the blood being on our hands, and I think, I think some of these folks are going to be on our hands if we don't do what we need to do. <clears throat> Amen? Sometimes admitting our wrong will get us a long way. And then ask the Lord to forgive and to help us do right. Amen? Anyone else before we pray and go? All right. Be much in prayer Sunday. And I'm excited because uh, next month we're going to start into some good stuff. Uh, we got some good, good preaching lined up. Uh, every one of these guys are, are phenomenally great. So... Uh, I pray the Lord will work and move and get it all fixed up. Uh, we got we got the full month filled in, so we're we're excited about it. Please tell others. Please tell other folk. We're doing Tuesday night so other folks can come and get some help. I'm not looking to get them here just to be here. I'm looking for God's children to get help, that God's work and God's will will be fulfilled. Amen. If they belong to you, Fold, or Calvary, or Harvest, or Temple, or whatever, if they can get some help and get fired up, we can see other folk get saved. Amen. And they might have a connection to some of your family. You just don't, you don't know. So uh, we need to pray about all that. Amen. 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 All right, let's go to the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to help with these requests that's been given tonight. Lord, you know each one of them. Lord, you, you know the needs in each one, and we pray that, God, you'd have mercy and be gracious to us. Lord, we realize we don't deserve anything but the judgment of God. But since we've asked you, Lord, to forgive us, to cleanse us, to make us your child, you've put us in your family. And we pray, Lord, that you'd help us to fulfill our side as being a son or a daughter. Lord, that we'd, we'd serve you, Lord, with joy in our heart. Help us to be more like Nehemiah, Lord, as he... He waited on the king all those years and never come before him with a sad countenance. Help us, Lord, not to come before you. I understand sometimes we have hardships and heartbreaks and we come and bow and, Lord, we're uh, brokenhearted and we need you to help us there. But, Lord, help us most of the time. Help us come, Lord, with a happy heart. and Lord, to worship you and thank you and praise you. 
even though we do have suffering times. But, Lord, we, we can still praise you, and I pray you'd help us with that. Answer each of these requests that's been mentioned tonight in accordance to thy perfect will. And, Lord, I pray for the upcoming dates, the meetings we've got scheduled. May you work in them. May you bless in them. And, Lord, I ask you tonight, God, you know our needs. Uh, you know our financial needs at the church. I pray that you'd meet them according to thy will. I pray, Lord, that you'd, you'd help us in our physical needs here at the church to get this, this dirt and to, to get the parking lot set up. Thank you for what's been done thus far and help us to get the rest of it worked out. Lord, we'll give you glory for that and uh, we we'll sure thank you for all that you do. So you help us now and uh, Lord, then help us to reach the lost. Lord, it's all that we might be able to reach these lost. Uh, Lord, you know in my heart as I've looked across this congregation tonight, some's got lost family members that need to be saved. Some's got family members that need to be serving. And I pray that, God, you'll help us to reach them. Lord, help us to encourage them. Help us to get them back in, into the service of the Lord where they belong, that you get honor, you get the glory, and you get the praise. Again, we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.